Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. If you have not watched the introduction video to this series, I strongly encourage you to watch it. That way you have a better understanding of all the reviews and recaps for this season. If you have watched it, all right, let's get started. It's Netflix original series, The Dark Crystal, The Age of Resistance. Season one, episode one, end, begin, all the same. That's coming up next. <laughs> it's Bunny. <laughs> with letting the audience know that we are in the world of Thra. And in the world of Thra, we have Gelfling, over seven tribes of Gelfling. And those are the individuals that live in that world. And in that world, we have the crystal of truth. The crystal of truth is the source of all living things in this world. And the crystal of truth is protected by a character named Ogra. And she has protected this crystal for thousands of years. Of those seven clans of Gelfling, we focus on three main groups. The Hara, which is more of the Scalactic Gelfling. We have the Stowood, who are more into protecting and battle. And we have the Groton, the clan that lives underground, is to themselves, and they could care less about all of the politics that go on above ground. Here is where we develop the main plot. We do have some creatures that are not of Thra, the Skeksis and the Mystiques. They come to Thra all to gain power and control of the crystal of truth. So to gain that control, they place Ogre in this sort of comatose state of her searching the stars and looking at all of the different universes because it's interesting to her. So they build her a machine so she can stay in that trance and going to different planets. So her attention and focus is off the crystal of truth so they can take control of it. As they take control of it, their focus is to gain power and for it to give them eternal being. And they are just pulling all of the power and all of the energy from the crystal. The other Gelfling don't know the danger of what's going on with the Skeksis and the Mystiques. So they are just living their lives as usual, accordingly, not knowing the danger that arises. So we see the Mystiques and the Skeksis, they're in this underground area where they are keeping the Crystal of Truth in their secretive area, and they are gathering around for their seance to pull energy from this crystal. They gather around and they pull from it and they say whatever, whatever words they need to say and they try to get energy from this crystal. And for some reason, they're upset because they don't feel this power up of energy and keeping them eternal or keeping them with all of this energy. And they say something is wrong with this thing. This crystal isn't working the way that it used to. What is going on? I saw that in the beginning of the episode, the crystal was sparkling clear of no blemishes, no fogginess. And now it is this deep, purple as if it has been uh, diluted of some sort and it's starting to crack. So they have taken so much energy from this crystal. Amongst their chambers, there are cages of different creatures and one is just rattling the cage and it looks like a spider, a big spider, and he gets out of the cage and goes into the land. And we can already tell that this spider is bad news. Go into a different area within the world and we see two little creatures. They look like little assistants and they have this little cart with all these nice treats and goodies and they're looking for somebody. They're keeping an eye out for somebody as they see if the coast is clear so they can get all of their treats on this little cart down the hallway. And they're like, mm, they look like the coast is clear. So they take off 
down the hall, rushing with their little cart with like lots of treats. And then we see two Gelfling. We can conclude that they're from Stowood because they're in battle armor, as cute as they want to be. And they stop this cart and say, whoa, 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 whoa. And the little creatures are trembling like, no, don't take the food. You know, they don't say anything, but they're giving that, that body language like, what do you want? And they say, we're not going to take your treats. What do you think? Because we took your treats last time that we're going to take them this time. And as one male Gelfling is talking, we have another female in the background to where they're being distracted enough so she can snatch a goodie and he can snatch a goodie. And they take off and they run, they run and they're like, oh, you know, oh, we got a little treat. And they go to their secret area and they start to eat the little treats that weren't meant for them and it in the first place and they sit there and they they you could tell their boyfriend and girlfriend they're reminiscing about kisses they used to share and how they used to get away and all of a sudden that is interrupted by them seeing this spider creature and they're really rattled about that and they don't know where it came from or what's going on and before they can get to it the creature runs away the girl Gelfling says, Ryan, so we learn that he, his name is Ryan, and he, she says, we've got to tell your father about this, that we saw this creature, and he's just like, yeah, let's go. So they run down, and they're about to tell the dad about what's going on, and when they get down there, he says, well, where have you two been? We are on our way to Hurrah, and you were nowhere to be found. You weren't at your post. You need to be more distinguished and alert soldiers and I'm disappointed and he says dad and the dad says captain I am captain <laughs> so we know that's his dad and we know that he plays no games with them being a little bit more serious and being soldiers and really really protecting anywhere that they are to make sure everything's okay and he says well you stopped me what do you want and he freezes and says, uh, nothing. We can discuss it when you get back. He says, fine, all right. In the meantime, I've assigned somebody else to be the premise person and the main person to refer to while not in my presence. And Ryan says, well, why isn't it me? And he says, I need somebody who's going to be on alert and who won't steal treats from the cart while they're at their post. And the little creatures to the side are like, ooh, and we could tell that they snitched. And he's just looking at them like, nah, why did you say anything? And he says, be more serious. Be on your post. I'm going to the land of Hurrah. We've got to go and take our post there. You do what you're supposed to do. I'm out of here. So they take off and they go in the little carriage. And the female Gifflin says, well, Ryan, why didn't you say anything? He says, you know, I've got to prove to my father that I don't have to run to him for everything and I can handle situations on my own. When we see the creature again, I'll make sure that I'll take care of it and that's what we're gonna do. So keep it on the hush that we've seen this big spider. We then see the caption that we are going to the land of Hurrah. We see the princess, Tabra, and Brian. And Brian seems like she's more of a soldier type. She has on armor. And the other two girls are in very girly outfits. And they're there at the palace. And they're telling the princess, look, I know that you're in the library all day reading your books and looking at things all day. But we wanted to keep you afloat that we have the sketches coming here, they are the protectors of the crystal. We need to be ready and to meet them and to make sure that we are doing everything okay in the land because they're the protectors of the crystals. We crystal, we have to do what they tell us to do and don't clown around. We need you to be there next to Matra, next to the mother, to be professional, to look like the ladies of the kingdom, so don't mess this up. We then go underground to the caves of Groton, and we see this cute little character who we don't know her name yet, but she has these big eyes, and she's just feeding all of the creatures underground, and they're so nice and sweet, and she's coddling them, and she's saying, oh, you need some food, here you go, oh, here you go. Here's this, and she's just really comforting everything underground. When she reaches one creature, she notices that the eyes are purple and she can't figure out why. And when she tries to feed it, it bites her. 
and she's terrified because nothing is of anger or negative energy in the land. So it's very odd for her to see a creature that has any anger, yet alone biting her. And when she gets bitten, she's bitten and she faints and falls down the side of what looks like a small cliff and she's knocked out. We then see the Skeksis and a, a Mystic. They're on their way to the land of Hurrah. And as they're in the carriage being escorted by the Stolwoods, you know, they're the ones that protect the lands. And they're going there. And as they're in there, they're like, you know, let's make sure we're at our best composure. And, you know, we don't let the cat out of the bag that we're playing this role in, in letting them know that we're really not protecting the crystal. Let's just go here and get what we need and be in and out. And as they're on their way there, their carriage run, runs into something in the road. And it is Princess Brea, you know, the one that always has her nose into the books. And her siblings and family see it and they're like, oh, you know, you're making a fool of yourself. You're being all clumsy. Now you're stopping the carriage. One of the Skeksis gets out of the carriage and says, you know, oh, you know, you gotta be more careful. You know, you're in the road and we're actually on the way up to the palace to go see the actually your mom and everybody else. Why don't you go ahead and get in and we'll escort you there? And she's like, well, no, I can, I can walk up there. And they're like, no, let us take you up there. We're all going up there together. Let's just escort you there. When she gets in, she the carriage, she notices that the Skeksis that are in there, they're coughing, they don't look too good, they don't look happy, which is really strange because if you're a protector of the crystal, you are in this ambiance of positive energy and happiness. So for you to be so sick was just weird. One's coughing and has the oozy nose and the other one is just baffled over and they look a mess so she's observing this and thinks it's really strange cut to one of the scenes where one of the sketches his name is the scientist and he is in a lab underground and he is trying to figure out why this crystal isn't working the way that it was supposed to and he's doing all types of crazy things and as he's doing an experiment he is almost consumed by the crystal and instead of giving life now the crystal is taking life and it almost consumes him until we have a sketches by the name of schizo that comes in and turns the machine off and says what are you doing you almost killed yourself what are you doing he's like i know i know i need to figure out why this crystal is taking life instead of giving life i need a source of a life energy to find out why this crystal isn't working. And as they're talking, they see one of the Stolewood Gelflings walking by and they think, hmm, that would be a good source of energy. And we need to get that to do our experiment. So you know that they're probably gonna take one of the Gelfling to experiment with this crystal to get a life source. Ooh. We then learn that the Gelfling that fell down the cliff after being bitten by a creature, she awakens and when she comes to, she is by the century tree. And she wonders, how have I gotten here? I've gotten to the century tree, but that's not where I fell. What is going on? And the tree says, you are here for a reason. And she says, you spoke? And, she, and the century tree goes, yes, Deetra. And she basically is just shocked, like, not only is the tree speaking to her, but the tree knows her name. And she says, well, how do you know my name? And she says, well, Deet, because apparently the tree knows that Deetra goes by Deet and says that the century tree doesn't speak to just anyone. So you have been chosen. And you need to know that there has been something terrible that is happening in the world of Thra. 
the crystal of, of truth has been tainted and someone is pulling energy from this crystal of truth and you must go above ground and journey and find out why and who is consuming this crystal because the crystal has been tainted therefore it is poisoning every living thing slowly in the world of Thra and if we don't stop this everything in the world of Thra can be tainted and evil. We then cut back to the palace where our beginning two Gelfling, Ryan and his girlfriend, are in this palace and they finally spot the creature that's wild and very angry. So from the previous scene, we can conclude that that spider has been affected by the darkness that's coming from the crystal. As they're chasing the spider, they're trying to track him down and stop it. And as they do that, they see the scientist Sketsy underground that is doing all of these experiments and they're looking through, you know, this opening where they see everything and they're wondering, well, why is he doing that? And why is the crystal purple? It's not even clear. And there looks like there's a crack. And as they're investigating and trying to figure out what the Sketsy is doing, which is the scientist, the female one falls into the laboratory where the scientist is. And he's like, yes, this is what I need to do my experience. And Ryan, he's watching and he's crippled in fear and there's nothing that he can do to help. We then cut to where we're in the land of Hurrah, where we have Prince, the Princess Bree and all of the family members, her mother, which is Matra, and they're all there, and they're there to be the host of the Sketsis coming there because they are the protectors of the crystal, and they're there to collect tides from the villagers that are in the town, the other Gefflings. So they're standing there and they're watching everyone in this line come in. And as they're coming in, they're in line and we have these two poor Gelfling and they give their tide and they have this little basket and it only looks like there's maybe like three or four little fruit thingies that are in there. And this guess he says, is this all you have to give? And they're like, well, yes, for some strange reason, we haven't had a good harvest and things are starting to die. So that's all we have. And the sketchy is saying, this is a shame and you should donate more and, it's, and you should be ashamed of yourself and we're not happy. But oh, they notice that one of them has a little medallion that's on and says well give me that instead and she's like well no please this remind this was from my mother that went on and this is all that i have left are her memories in this locket and i can't i can't give you that and the sketchy says will you disappoint the protectors of the crystal give it to me and she's so sad and the husband gelflin says just give it to him we have to give something. And of course, Princess Brea is like, Mother, there must be something we can do to stop this. He's giving, he's taking something from the poor Gefflin. Can't we stop this? And the mother says, no. We, this is tradition. They have to take a tide and they have to give it to him. So you have this poor little Gefflin. She takes off the locket and she gives it to the Skitsy because he then says, oh yes, this locket has a lot of power and a lot of truth and wisdom from your loved one moving on. So yes, I'll take it. And while everybody else is in shock, like, wow, she gave the tide, but it's a good thing. And we'll all clap because this is something that we have to dedicate because we have to respect the protectors of the crystal. And, you know, Princess Brea, she's just like, mm, something isn't right about that. I have to see what's going on. The princess goes back to her library because, you know, they're the Scalactic Gelfling. So she has hills and hills of books. And she's searching for all of these books and she finds out information. She has a book about a Skitsy. And she's reading it and she's like, hmm, this is weird. What I don't understand is that the protectors of the crystal are very well off in abundance. 
and they have everything that they need because they have the crystal. Why are they taking tithes even from poor Gifley? Something isn't right. So she talks to one of the assistants that tries to keep the library nice and tidy and organized. And she says, give me more information about the Skeksis and people who protect the crystal. And he says, well, princess, I don't think you want to go down this way or down this road because you might find information that you don't need. And we're led to think, hmm, does the, does, does the assistant know something that we don't? So while she's holding this book about information about the Skeksis and just the world of Thra period and everything that goes on in that world, we see a weird symbol that's on the front of it. And she says, what is this symbol here? And he's like, well, I don't know. Do more research and read about it. I don't know. And she says, I demand to know the truth about the crystal. And all of a sudden we see more symbols going up to the top of the ceiling and the earth starts to quake and books are flying all over the place. And she's like, well, what, well, what's going on? He's like, I don't know. You sparked something. I don't know what it is. And she sees more and more symbols. And she says, I need to find out what this symbol means because maybe this symbol can tell us what's going on and what's happening. Deet has come to by fainting and her family members have found her and she's being you know seen by one of the little doctors that are there and they're telling her oh you must have fainted and you have a bump on your head and you know watch what's going on and how did you get bitten and what's going on and she says I was bitten from a creature and I also saw the century tree and the century tree told me that I have to go to the land of Hurrah because something is wrong with the crystal and we have to figure out why certain creatures have been affected by darkness. And her family is just like, you bumped her head and something isn't right. And the doctor says, no, the century tree doesn't just talk to anyone. So that means that you have a journey. You have a responsibility to go to that land and to find out what is wrong with the crystal. The century tree doesn't just talk to anybody. So we need to make sure that you have the materials and things that you need to go on your journey. And you need to take these foods. And you need to take this bag, bag and you must wear this certain cloth to go over your eyes because the light from above ground will hurt them for a while. So then we learned that we have the people that are in underground in Groton have very sensitive scene to the light because they've been underground and we know that's why they have these big round eyes because that are the eyes that have allowed them to be able to see in darkness underground or very low lighting she accepts accepts her journey takes on her little bag and wears her cloth and proceeds to, to go above ground to begin this journey of wondering what is causing all of this darkness and how can we help in making the crystal of truth go back to its original form. So now the scientist has Vera, so we learn her name, and Ryan is still looking from another source, watching the scientist as he has her captured because he wants to do an experiment to see if he can catch life in her essence and giving life instead of the crystal taking life. So as he has her, he has her in this chair and has her captured and he says, look into the crystal and I want you to focus. And we see that the crystal is starting to take her essence and starting to take her life. And Ryan is just just in pause, not being able to do anything because he must watch what's going on. And if he does go down there, what can he do? So he's continuing to take the life and the crystal is pulling the life from her. And she's slowly dying and she's slowly becoming of nothing as her existence starts to evaporate and she's starting to disappear. And he's thinking, yes, yes, the crystal is capturing her life, her essence. And as she's disappearing, we're seeing this fluid 
that are going into these tubes. Her life is going into these little tubes as a liquid form. And slowly and unfortunately, she dies. And the scientist has captured all of her life essence in liquid form and Ryan is crying and he can't believe what he's seen and the scientist calls all of the other sketches in there and says look look what I've discovered we have life essence in these tubes and all we have to do is consume them and we will start to be eternal and we could just use the crystal but we need more gaffling and they all gather around and we have the emperor and we have all of these other sketchy creatures and mystiques and they're just indulging and drinking the essence and they are just celebrating and super happy and like yes we figured it out but save some of the essence because we still need to do more experience experiments and we still need to see what else we can figure out but we need more gaffling yes the gaffling will give us life and as as Ryan is crying a little bit above them in the hiding place, hiding place, a tear falls and drops on one of the sketches. And they're like, what? What is this? And they see him above their heads. And he's like, we must kill him. We must kill him. Nobody can know what's going on. And now he knows our secret. So they are trying to find him and capture him because he can't go. Because if he tells the other Gaffling what is going on, the Gaffling will know the sketchy secret. They will know that they're not the protectors of the crystal. They're actually taking life from it and their secret will be out and they will know what's been going on all this time. So that was episode one. Let me know what you think. For this first episode, for those of you who are new, if you watch the introduction, you will understand the puppetry of what's going on. So it may be a little weird or a little strange to get used to the movement of the puppets. But if you watch the introduction, you will understand why they move, how they move. Because it being 2019, we are so used to seeing CGI and things so advanced. So to see the visuals of puppetry, it's like we're going backwards and we're going into a more simplistic way of animating a story. Let me know what you think. Subscribe, comment, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts. And follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, officialbun underscore E. I'll see you next time. Bye.